Hi there, welcome to another episode of Supply and Hub. In this video, we will be talking about the different summary measures, which are statistical tools that we use to describe a set or sets of data. We use this to provide a snapshot of what is going on in our data. And in this particular video, we will talk about the first summary measures called measures of central tendency. But before we continue, do not forget to like this video, hit the subscription and notification bell to stay updated of future videos. Most often than not, the data that we gather are different. What we want to do is to identify a value that in some sense representative of the entire dataset. Just like our M&Ms here with different colors, we are trying to identify what single color could represent the entire dataset despite the knowledge that these M&Ms have different colors. There are three commonly used measures of central tendency. The first one is called the mean. We, we otherwise call it the average and the mean is only applicable if the data that we have is interval or ratio. We need to recall the differences of these levels of measurements because this will identify which measure of central tendency is appropriate for a particular data set. So as I have said, the mean is applicable or most appropriate if our data is interval and ratio. And that is because when we compute the mean, it involves an operation, a mathematical operation addition, and we can only add numerical data. Remember that an interval or a ratio variable should be numerical. If that is ordinal or nominal, that would mean those variables are categorical, and categorical variables, the values or the attributes, of, cannot be mathematically added. If the data that we have is indeed ordinal, the most appropriate measure of central tendency is called the, the median. The median is simply defined as the middlemost value in our data set. The most important in identifying, we are not even computing something here, we are, we are simply identifying the middlemost value we need to remember that before we do that, identify the middlemost value, we need to make sure that our data set is a range. Remember, an ordinal variable can be ranked or arranged. If our variable is not interval, not a ratio, or not ordinal, it is nominal, then the most appropriate measure of central tendency is called the mode. The mode is the most frequent or common value in our data set. Let us provide some examples for each. An example for the mean. Uh, I'd like to mention that when we are computing the mean, we need to identify first which of the two are we computing. Is it a population mean or a sample mean? I want to reiterate the symbols that we are using here. When we are computing the mean from a population, then the symbol that we use is this symbol. This is not an English letter. This is a Greek letter called mu, and this represents the population mean. If we are computing from a sample, then the symbol that we use is x bar. Let me provide an example, a problem. And then let us identify first if we are going to compute for the population mean or the sample mean. Mr. Lewis is evaluating the mathematics proficiency of his students. He randomly selected 12 from a total of 50 students. The following are the scores of his sample in a 60-point test. In the problem, it is very clear that the data that we have here, the 12 data points, by the way, we call this each value here a data point. This is our data set and each value is a 
data points. So we have 12 data points. Clearly, this is a sample. So we are to compute not the population mean, but the sample mean. What is the formula for computing the sample mean? That is very simple. We are going to add all the data points and the resulting number, that's the sum, we divide it by the number of data points. So we have here 45 plus 34 plus 52. This is a symbol that we use in mathematics. This denotes that there are values in between. Uh, we just don't want to write it too long, so we use this uh, notation. The last data point is 45. If we add all of them, the result is 470 and then divide it by 12, that is approximately 39.17. So 39.17 is called the sample mean. And 39.17 is a value, it's a general grade. How do we interpret 39.17 in the context of the problem that we have here? These are scores of 12 students and the mean is 39.17. We may simply say that in a general sense, the students scored 39.17. So if you as a teacher considers 39.17 uh, a good performance or an average performance or a poor performance, that's up to you. This is another notation. It's called the summation notation. This is the Greek letter sigma. And we use this notation to denote a sum, a sum of numbers or data points. So if we do not want to write it this way, this is a bit long, we can write this way. So the sum of all data points, that is xi, is equal to 470. This is uh, more completely read as sum of x sub i, where i starts from 1 until n. Another problem, we have 13 randomly selected customers. They were asked to rate the quality of a certain product as poor, fair, satisfactory, and excellent. The following are their responses. So these are just codes, 2, 1, 2, 1, 4, and so on, are just codes to their responses. For example, the first customer said 2. That means fair. The last customer said four. The quality is excellent. Now, why is median an appropriate measure of central tendency and not the mean? That is because our data here is not interval nor ratio. These responses, poor, fair, satisfactory, and excellent are categorical. Specifically, these are ordinal because we can rank which comes first and which comes last. Therefore, the median is indeed appropriate. Again, as I mentioned a while back, uh, before we identify the median, it is important that we rearrange our data set first. We can either rank this from the uh, poor quality going the best quality or we can start with the best quality going down to the poorest. Let us do that. Let us start with the poor quality and going down to the best quality. That's excellent. So it's the same data set. We simply rearrange it. And then we identify the median as the middlemost value. So since there are 13, 13 uh, data points, the middlemost value should be the seventh data point from the rank or ordered data set and that should be 2. Now, suppose that there are only 12 randomly selected customers. So let's remove the last one. Let's remove this one. So we, have, we only have 1, 2, 4. This 4 here. How should we identify the median? Because there is no middlemost value in this case. What we do is identify the two middlemost value and then take the average of that. So we add and then divide it by 2. So if there are 12 customers, this customer until this customer, the median would still be 
2 because this is 2, this is 2. Suppose the two middlemost values are 3 and 4. What should be the median? That is simply 3 plus 4 divided by 2. So that's 7 divided by 2 or 3.5. The median is 3.5 if that is the case. An example for the mode. Why is the mode appropriate for this particular example? Let's read the problem. The participants of a certain seminar come from the different provinces of the Cordillera Administrative Region. Describe the distribution of the participants according to the province that they come from. So we have how many participants? We have 20 participants and uh, at the other column are the corresponding province that they come from. For example, the first participant comes from Mountain Province. The last participant also comes from Mountain Province. And as we mentioned a while back, the mode is simply the most frequent data point in our data set. To help us identify the most frequent data set, let us create a frequency distribution table for this one. So this is a summary of frequency distribution table, the different provinces from Abara to Mountain Province. And corresponding to each province is a frequency. So how do, did we get to? Because there are two participants coming from Abra, three participants coming from Ifugao. And we can immediately see that the most frequent province are Benguet and Mountain Province. So it is possible that for a mode, the values would be more than one. Uh, just a reminder, when you are asked to identify the mode, remember that your answer should be the variables that are being talked about. Some students are confused of writing that the mode for this particular problem is 5 because there are 5 participants from Binget and 5 from Mountain Province that is actually wrong because our variable is the province that they come from. Therefore, the mode is a province. So our answer is Binget and Mountain Province. There. Another example, I'm going to uh, present you a data set, a very simple one, and then let us identify the most frequent uh, data point. Here is the first one. We have how many data points? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And obviously, the most frequent data point is B. Because there's only one mode, we call this data set unimodal. Another data set. How many data points do we have? I think it's still seven. And for this uh, particular data set, data set B, there are more than one mode. In fact, there are two. It's A and B. We have three A, so the, the frequency for A is three. Also, the frequency for B is three. So both of them are our modes. We call the data set bimodal because there are two modes. Data set C, how about this one? We have two A's, so the frequency for A is 2. Also, the frequency for B is 2. The frequency for C is 2. And the frequency for D is 1. So that, we can see three different modes. The modes are A, B, and C. We call this data set multimodal. How about the last one, data set D? We have five data points, A, B, C, D. And if you look at it, the frequency, all of the data points here, is 1. So should we say that the modes are A, B, C, D, and E? It's actually not. We say that the data set has no mode because we cannot identify a data point that is more frequent than the other. That's it, our different measures of central tendency. For our next video, we will talk about the second summary measures called the measures of dispersion or variability. I will see you there.